but let's say someone just like stuck and they have like writer's block. What, what kind of strategies could you share with them to kind of get over that? Uh, there's, some, there's different kinds of writer's block. Um, you know, sometimes you get, st- and depends also on what you're writing. Some, so I'm going to just, I'm going to do a little sort of scatter shot here. Just throw out a couple of different ideas. You know, one may apply to you and the others may not. Um, sometimes you get, st- I'll f- I find that my, my uh, I've run out of gas or the, the gears are grinding down and my car just isn't going to move. And I'm somewhere in the middle of the story and I'm just kind of stuck. I mean, I got these story problems, but, but it's bigger than that. I just can't seem to move. And this could happen in writing an article or a nonfiction book as well. And I love James Patterson's advice, which is research solves all writer's block. I don't think that's quite true, but it's true often. Um, when I was writing the book, Steel Fear, that's the, um, here, let's get the audio visual, audio visual aid, Steel Fear. When I was writing Steel Fear, uh, my first novel, it takes place on an aircraft carrier. And I've never, at that point, I'd never been on an aircraft carrier, but I, I did well, a li- little later. But um, I got stuck often. And what I did was I went on, on online and just read a ton about aircraft carriers. Uh, I read books about aircraft carriers. And every time I went online, I would learn something that was just bizarre or wild or fascinating. I had no idea how I fit in the story, but all of a sudden it would spark other, you know, well, what if he did this? And what if that happened? And what if, what if, what if? So learning new stuff, it's like people say travel is the greatest way to write. That it is a great way to write, but you can travel on your computer, learn stuff about your subject, learn stuff about your location, learn stuff about your characters or that type of person, gobble it up, even if it doesn't seem relevant. And that often pulls you out of the rut and gets you going. That's one. Another one, writer's block. Often people say, I I can't, like I have this idea, but I, I don't know how to start. I don't know how to start. So here's my advice for everybody who says they have a book in them, but they just, they're afraid of the blank page. They don't know how to start. My advice is don't start at the beginning. Don't try to start at the beginning. Start wherever the apple lands, wherever the dart hits the wall. Start wherever something sparks your imagination or catches your fancy or inspires you or intrigues you. Or if you have this random idea for a thing that somebody says or somebody does, start there and write that. And don't read it, right? Just start, write that, and then put it away. Don't read it. Organize where you put it so you know where it is. Right? Be organized, but don't don't even edit a single letter, a single punctuation mark. If you forgot to put a period at the end of the sentence, don't go back and put it there. Leave it, leave it, leave it. <laughs> um, and, and then, you know, some people write in a more linear way. Some writers like to start at the beginning and write to the end. Some people write in a very non-linear way. They kind of, it's like, it's like weaving and they just go the whole thing. I, whatever your type is, if you're stuck and you don't know how to start, don't start at the beginning. Start where, wherever I call it the low-hanging fruit. Start where it's easy to start and don't worry about where it fits in the book. Write a lot of different pieces and then you can worry about the structure of it and, and you know your actual starting point, you may not get it until three quarters of the way through. Uh, happens all the time. Yeah, another, another uh, uh, part of writer's block is... Um, Ask yourself different questions. You know, ask yourself a question about this book or about this article or about this blog post. Ask your, you can ask yourself, what am I really trying to say? Sometimes you get blocked because you're trying to do two things at once. You're trying to say two things. You're trying to make two different points or you're trying to have two things happen in a chapter and it's too many and it, they're choking each other off. Uh, it can, narrative can be like, uh, narrative writing can be like a garden. If you have too much stuff, it can all choke each other and nothing grows. So I've had, I used to write a, a monthly column for a magazine. I did this for years. I had a regular column for years and years and years and years. And often I would get stuck in the column and I had a friend who, who would say, you know, you should just take this part out and make it a separate article. And as soon as I took this t- subject or this concept out of the article, suddenly it was easy to write. I had too much in there. So sometimes taking some of the toys out of the, the toy box is, is the solution. Yeah, just I really appreciate all those uh, tips to getting getting over writer's, writer's block because that's definitely a big hurdle a lot of like, you know, aspiring writers face. Yeah. 